So what you all came for, we'll get into the demo. And Patrick, you can see my screen, my browser. I can, yes. OK, great. So I'm in my uh, Jira software cloud instance here. And I created a Kanban uh, board in my demo Kanban project. And what you're looking at here is the backlog view. So Elassian created this, creates this con, con plan uh, feature where you can put your first status in a backlog view, particularly because you don't want your far left status of your Kanban board to include all of your backlog, which would get very busy and make it hard for you to prioritize and add things to potentially. So we have this backlog view where everything starts down here in the backlog, right? And it's very easy to create things. So maybe I want to create like story 5CA, story 5CB, okay? And then what we have with this is our epic panel. So we have our epic panel here so we can link easily link our stories to our epics. You'll see in Epic 5, I have 18 issues, six are completed, and I can grab two of them like this and just drag them right into that Epic. Okay, so now you can see it added Epic 5 there. I also have a version panel, so I can leverage my releases, which in Jira is that fixed version field, right? So you'll see I've released two and released three here. Um, release two has 48 issues, 23 are completed with start and end date. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab those issues and throw them into release two. So easy drag and drop stuff. Um, I'll collapse these. And then basically I can go into any one of these issues and you see I get the expanded issue details for you. What I want to show here are a few things. One is the type of work. So I added this custom field here and this allows us the ability to say if the work is unplanned or not, right? And you'll see I added um, a configuration here where the unplanned work on the far left is red. It really calls it out for us, right? I'm using the component field, um, but I could use a custom field for my cost of serve, my class of service. So I'm going to say this one's expedite, and um, go ahead and add that there. And you'll see that um, I added a configuration here to show the class of service on the backlog view as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab these and bring them to the next status of my workflow, which is selected for development. And let me just get to the top here. And I'm going to put it right here at the top, okay? And another thing I can do here is that, that uh, cost of delay that I was telling you about. So in the cost of delay, we created like a global loop transition along with some automation, um, all out of the box automation, no add-ons. And basically you click that button and it's going to give you those cost of delay fields. So what's that revenue per week that we would lose? Let's say it's $5,000. What's our cost of delay duration in weeks? We'll say eight. And then if I calculate it, you'll see it's going to add the revenue per week, the cost of delay duration, and it does the math for you and it gives you that 40,000. So you get to be able to visualize that right there. Okay. So now I'm in selected for development and I'm doing my work and you'll see the far right, far left is selected for development. Um, the reason why it's red is I've set some work in progress limits and I'll show you this in the board settings as well, but you'll see there's a minimum amount and there's a maximum amount. My minimum is five, my maximum is 15, I'm at 17. So I'm just gonna move these over to show you that it'll clear it and then it adjusted it here as well. Um, notice my workflow. Uh, my workflow has a bunch of different like hold statuses as well. Um, so I have my selected for development. That's kind of a hold status. I'm waiting on, I'm waiting to start my development, right? Um, it's, it's super important, I feel in Kanban, to be able to measure that as well, to be able to measure how long things are, are um, waiting for something else or things are stale and stagnant, stuff like that. And you'll notice uh, then I have my in development, then I get the ready for testing, right? Another hold status, then I get in testing. The waiting status I'm using here, which I added to my workflow um, to basically uh, put in there if any anytime I'm waiting for something like a vendor, I'm waiting for something like a teammate, um, uh, maybe a manager's approval, you could throw it in here and you wanna be able to calculate your wait time, okay? Um, and then ready for release, uh, throw it in there, another wait status. And, the, and when I'm ready to release stuff from my um, board, I just throw it into the done column and I have my little release button up here. I could select 2.0.0. I'm not gonna release it, but you'll see there's 50 issues in this release. 
23 are resolved, 27 are unresolved. It's going to tell me, ask me what I want to do with the rest that are unresolved. Um, and if I go uh, to here, this will take me right to my release hub. Oh, my issue navigator, excuse me. This will take me to my release hub. Cancel this. And then in my release hub, you can see my releases. I can click on 2.0.0. It's going to give you all the details of 2.0.0. There's 50 issues in the version. 23 are done. Two are in progress. 25 um, are to do. Gives you the list of all of them with all the details you want. And it also gives you release notes. So you get the release notes right there as well. So I can release from the board. And then I can use the release hub to visualize my release notes and all those, uh, all those important um, things that you need to see. Notice, too, here, if I move this one to waiting, this column turns yellow because my minimum is one. So if I don't reach my minimum, then it's gonna turn yellow. If I go over my maximum, it's gonna turn red, okay? Notice I have configured on this on my cards, uh, the red on the left-hand side for unplanned work. I have configured my cost of delay here as well. So I have some fields added on there. Just to show you how that looks um, in the board settings. So the columns um, section is the area I wanna focus on. So you'll notice that uh, we have our different columns with our different statuses mapped to those columns. Um, the last one here, we're setting a resolution to it. And we also have the Kanban backlog is using the backlog status, right? So I have these statuses mapped to these columns. Um, and this is where you also set your cost of delay as well, right there. Okay, I can also set swim lanes. So what I'm doing with swim lanes is my class of service. So it's basic JQL, um, showing the component equals expedite, and that's going to create my swim lanes. All right. I could also do quick filters, and I'll show you what those look like on the board. I created one here for expedite as well. If I go back to my board, you'll see that I have my quick filter up here for expedite. If I click it, it's going to show me only the stuff that's expedited and filter everything else out. You'll notice here too, I can collapse my swim lanes. And now I only have the expedite swim lane toggled open. So the board gives you a lot of ways to visualize a lot of different data, which is super important because anyone on the team can go here. Um, any, le any level of management can go here and they can visualize what's going on at any point in time. 